Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through all the tools in my minimalistic grooming kit. I wanted to pop on with this clip before you actually see my face and the intro. You will see that things kind of go sideways, so I just want to let you guys know right now that the clips of me talking low quality, Everly ends up being in it, the outro is a mess, but all the clips of the products will be nice and clear like this one. Let's just stop talking and jump right into the video. Thanks guys. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Savannah. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a starter kit for groomers. If you are just getting into the industry, these are the main tools that you will need. Now I will also mention that I am a very minimalistic groomer. So this is actually the toolkit that I've been using for the last seven years. Okay guys, this little girl has been on a nap strike and I've been trying, <laughs> yeah you, I've been trying to film just this intro because I've had these clips, oh you smiley, I've had these clips sitting waiting to get edited for a while and I just needed an intro and an outro and literally right as I was filming the part you just saw, she woke up after me trying to get her <laughs> to sleep all day long, so she's just going to be here for this part of the video. Yes. Stinker. <laughs> I was hoping to make this like a professional intro video, but sometimes these things happen. So in today's video, I'm going to be going through all of the tools I use as a mobile dog groomer. These will also be applicable to you if you're working out of a salon, if you're just grooming your dogs at home, or if you're just getting started. Now I find if you follow a lot of big groomers in the industry, or I find just the industry in general, if you follow other groomers on social media, there seems to be, I don't know the word for it, but a lot of hype around having very expensive tools and having a lot of tools. People show you a $200 comb, the brushes that are $80, slicker brushes. I wanna show you that you can still get beautiful grooms with simple tools and keeping it very minimalistic. This year, going back to work after being on maternity leave with this one, I do want to try out some new products, invest a little more. I get that paying a little bit more using certain products might be easier on me, might make my grooms even better. So I will be featuring new products and tools on my channel as I collect them. But today I just want to show you that it's possible to get beautiful grooms with a minimalistic kit and also give you guys that are just getting started in grooming some ideas. I will also be linking all the products down below that I can find. And yeah, I think that's it. So let's just jump right into the video. It'll be better lighting than this. Thanks so much guys. All right, so starting off, I'm just showing you guys how I have stored my tools for the past seven years. This white caddy is actually just from Dollarama still has a sticker on it and it was four dollars and then this is just a little blade case it also has a top to it that i keep all my most used blades in now i am looking for a better system to use in the van to organize things a little bit better a shear holder and maybe a blade holder on the wall but once again this is just a super simple way that you could start with organizing your tools if you don't have a lot of money or resources it does the trick I'm now going to go over my blades. My favorite brand is the Andis Ultra Edge. I do not prefer the ceramic edge. 40s and 30s I like to use for pads and under snap-on combs. 10s I will occasionally use for sanitary, but I actually prefer 7s for in the sanitary. I find that it really ensures that you aren't going to get any irritation, and I don't like a super close sanitary cut. Fives I do for a lot of shave downs. I will mention I love doing reverse blades on dogs, nice and smooth. Fours for just a little bit fluffier of a cut. This big one is a 5 8 blade. 
And the next one is a three quarter blade. This is my longest blade. Now one that I need to repurchase that I use a lot and I've worn out is a three and three quarter blade. I love that length for whatever reason. And I will mention all these blades are dirty. They've been sitting in the van for a year. And as you can see, there's some surface rust. So I'm going to be making a video showing you guys if it's possible to remove that surface rust and also how to properly clean your blades. Let's move on to my most loved shears. I have tried many different shears other than this, but these ones I keep coming back to. So the three that I just pointed to are the Guy Black Pearls. The pearls always fall off of them, but two of these, one pair of the thinners and the curves I've had for seven years. There's also a straight pair that I have in the van that isn't featured here. Now I'm going to show you a comparison of my new thinners compared to the seven year old ones. You can see it's been sharpened so many times it's getting close to where it says black pearl. So I'm going to have to get rid of those ones pretty soon. Now these curved ones, same thing. The sharpening on them is getting very close to the black pearl. They also need to be realigned as you can see. I freaking love these things though. Next are my fresh grooming shears. I actually won these on an Instagram giveaway. What a score and have absolutely fallen in love. I love shears that are lightweight and very smooth when they cut. And these are along with the black pearls. I want to try a bunch of other shears from this company. So I'll definitely be ordering some this year. So here's the lineup of my usual shears that I use in the van minus my straights that are black pearls as well. Let's take a look at my rubber curry comb lineup. I love using these in the bath to get a good lather or on shorter hair dogs that shed. This first one is Furminator brand. Honestly, don't prefer it. Definitely doesn't help in the bath because the ridges are so small, but I do use it sometimes on dogs like pugs, etc. So I thought it was worth showing. Next is this Rush brush that I actually found at Dollarama. It is very similar to the next one I'm going to show you. I use this lots in the bath. Then finally, a good old classic, the Zoom Groom. I hate all these things in the front. They get so full of dirt and grime, but I love using this on shorter hair dogs that shed. My favorite thing, cats sometimes as well too. Okay, let's talk about nail clippers. Now this first blue pair, I have no idea what brand it is. It's honestly just some off brand, but I absolutely love them. They are so strong. They're for about, I would say medium sized nails. So I did find a link for you of nail clippers that look very similar to these. But yeah, for whatever reason, I love those. Next are just some standard cat nail clippers. Some people call these birdie clippers. Nothing special about these. Honestly, all of the ones that I've used like this work pretty good. I have quite a few pairs in my kit that I've just kind of collected along the way. This is a simple black pair. They all kind of do the same thing. Now, another pair of clippers that aren't here because they broke, but I am repurchasing are these ones right here in this picture. These are the Miller Forge, I think they're called. Once again, everything will be linked down below, but these are super strong, especially if you're doing large dog's nails. So I am repurchasing these, and then I'm also looking into getting the medium size as well. Let's talk about combs. So here you can see two silver metal combs that look very similar, but let me assure you, they are not similar. So as you can see, this I ordered from, I think, Ren's Pets. This is a good quality, um, not super expensive comb, but as you can see, all the teeth are straight and in place. This next one looks pretty much exactly the same, but it's from PetSmart. And as you can see, over time, these teeth move. So even though they look exactly the same, the quality is not up to par. Now I am looking to try some better combs. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. But honestly, the one metal comb without the bent teeth was probably like $15 on Ren's Pets and it does the trick. But I am wanting to try some others that maybe can make my life easier.
Moving on to some of my de-shedding tools. This first tool I always see is popular among groomers. I use it sometimes, but it's not my favorite because I find the teeth to be very sharp. So if you are using this type of tool, please be very careful on your pet's skin. Don't drag it on their skin, kind of pull up through the fur. Now, as you can see, this is a Con Air brand from PetSmart. I love the handle on this. I wish all of the more expensive grooming tools would have those handles. Now, lately, this has been my favorite. As you can see, well loved. The logo is off of it. This is a Furminator. As you can see, the teeth have been coming out, but I've seen that they have an updated version. So I'm going to order that one and see if I like it as much as I did this one when it was in its prime. I find that it gets out the undercoat very well and the tip of the teeth aren't sharp. Now, this is your classic coat king and I think it is the coat king brand I'll put it down below as you can see it has these metal teeth and they have kind of blades on them this is the larger size and then also this is the smaller size so you can see here the difference in size and also that the teeth on here are uh, spaced further apart so they can remove different types of undercoat. I really enjoy both of those. They're a little bit more expensive but they definitely do a really good job. Also for undercoat just using your comb as well can be really helpful to get the undercoat um, out. You may have noticed by now that all of the brushes no matter what type of brush they all have metal bristles. This is so plastic, pins and brushes don't break, and the metal really helps you get from the skin all the way through the coat nice and easy. For carding terriers and just kind of those fuzzy flyaways on goldens and those type of dogs, I just have a really simple carding tool. I got this in grooming school. You can see it has my old initials on it so nobody else stole it from me. I don't do a ton of carding because I do a lot of pet trims, but this simple one does the trick for me. To go over just kind of your regular brush selection, I love this Oster slicker brush. The pins are very small. I got this in grooming school, but I've gone through quite a few of them. They are cost effective, so if you are a beginner groomer, this might be a great place for you to start. They come in different sizes. This is a pin brush. This looks most similar to a hairbrush for humans, but once again, you'll notice the difference is that the pins are metal. I use this on drop coats usually at the end of the groom and then this super soft brush I love to spray like a finishing spray onto this and then brush it onto the pet's coat to make it nice and shiny. This is great for shorter haired breeds or also like longer hair breeds like Shelties etc to really get that shine when you're done at the end of the groom. Let's go back in time a little bit and talk about a de-shedding brush. Now this is a knockoff Furminator. I want you guys to be very careful with these type of brushes. They can look slightly different depending on if they're for short hair or longer hair. This one is for shorter haired breeds. Why I want you to be careful is because there's actually a blade on the inside of this and it's very easy to get carried away and actually take out too much fur. Some groomers love this tool, some groomers hate it. I use it very occasionally. Let's cover some of my favorite grooming tools, dematters. This one on the left, this dematting comb that has multiple blades on it with a thumb rest is my favorite. I actually have a few different ones of these. I've tried different brands. I do really like this one. I think it's the Q brand. Um, yeah, it does the trick. By the same brand, this is just a single blade that can help you slowly break up mats. Just make sure that you are using it away from the pet's skin. And then finally, just your good old trusty metal comb can also help you get through matting on those pets. I also want to mention this is for light matting. Any heavy matting gets shaved out because it is too painful to remove. Let me show you a tool that I use for a lot of short haired breeds to get out all that shedding fur. Now, if you haven't noticed, all of the items with this pink tape on them 
I have had for seven years because I put this tape on at school so nobody would steal my tools. Now this handy dandy thing, as you can see, comes apart so you can use it on large dogs like this or you can put it back together and just use it with the handle together. It's made out of metal, does the trick. Be careful that you don't push down too hard to hurt the dog's skin. If you've watched any of my grooming tutorials, you may have noticed that if I'm not using a blade, I'm using a snap-on comb to set the length. Now these guard combs or snap-on combs are just the Andis brand. They're plastic and they come in two different packages, a shorter length and then also a longer length. So I'm showing you right now one of the shorter ones and then the absolute longest ones. I hear lots of groomers rave about metal guard combs, but I honestly have always just used the plastic. I used a set of metal once and I didn't prefer them, so I keep going back to either these Andis ones or the MDC Romani ones. So right now I'm going to show you kind of how it works. So there's these clips that have, I guess you could call it tension on them. And they clip onto, I usually use a 30 blade underneath them. I'll show you how that works in a second. Right now I'm going to move on to the clippers that I have been using. These are the 5 speed Andis. Right now I do have a 30 blade on them. This little doodad on top is where my clipper vac clips on. And this is actually 3D printed from a friend to save some money. These are the controls. The middle button is on and off. And then the up and down arrow controls the speed because it is a five speed. I started off using a two speed and I find this one is much lighter and more ergonomic. Right now I'm showing how the snap-on comb just slides on. And honestly, I usually have like a pink or purple set of these, but when I went to repurchase, um, they only had the blue, but it ends up matching my snap-on combs. And then right there, I'm showing the motion that I use when I use my guard combs. Okay, so I forgot to take a clip of my nail grinders. For a corded Dremel, I recommend this Purple Andis. It has lasted me for years. I've also used this wireless Dremel as well. I've gone through a couple of these, so I don't know if I necessarily recommend it, but some groomers do recommend the other varieties that the Dremel provides, but I actually found a Dremel on Amazon that has a diamond bit that has good reviews and I'm gonna test it out. So I will link that down below, but I'll also keep you guys updated on how well it works. And I think that about covers my minimalistic grooming kit. Enjoy the outro. No, you're good for a little bit. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you found the products helpful. I will link as many of them as I can down below. And if you haven't already, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button as I try my best to upload a new video every single week. My husband came home and he's in the shower now, if you can hear that. It's been quite the day. <laughs> we would love to have you part of our YouTube family. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. See you next time. Bye.